Greetings YouTube and welcome to my latest weapons build. Well, this is going to be kind of a weapons defensive item. Now, I'm actually going to build something which is known, a modified version of something that is known as a Madhu buckler. This is out of India. And it was a buckler um, with either uh, horns, eye pointing in either direction vertically, one point up, one point down, or a spear mounted in front of the buckler with a spear point up and spear point down, so it was a double-ended spear. And it was used as a buckler in the oft hand, oft hand with your other weapon in your, uh, your dominant hand. And I'm inspired by this, but I'm going to use something a little bigger, and I'm going to make a two-handed version thereof, which will be more like a, you know, exotic weapon to use the parlance of D&D or Pathfinder, um, or more of a gladiatorial weapon than in a strictly uh, military combat field weapon. So this is going to be an exotic specialty weapon for some sort of, you know, probably esoteric martial art in a post-apocalyptic setting. Um, and wow, my battery needs to be replaced. Darn. All right, so I'm going to go do that in a minute. Um, but I'm going to start as my base with this a direct TV satellite dish, which I got for nothing because it was by the side of the road and it's, it's intact, even the cabling is still there. So the first thing I'm going to need to do, besides replace my camera battery, is to remove the dish and the rest of it I will store, maybe I'll find a use for it at some point in the future. Um, there are fasteners and there are square pieces of tubing or rectangular pieces of tubing and stuff, so I may find a use for the other components, I don't know. But right now, this is going to be the biggest issue. Once I get that off, that will be the, the, the base. And then I'm going to build a double-ended spear out of this piece of three-quarter inch, five-foot electrical conduit, and I'm going to use this piece of um, one and a half by one-eighth inch steel as my two blades. Now I'm going to make blades about eight inches long and about four inches of uh, inside four inches uh, of uh, haft, which will be inside the tubing, uh, and that's going to be how I extend this to be a little bit longer. And I, I thought one and a half was a nice distance for this because I'm kind of going for the spear to look aesthetically light and fast. So I don't want a really wide piece. I could have gone two inch, but I thought two inch was a little bit wide. And if I'm wrong on this, I can always replace it because I will be splitting. I'll be drilling two holes here, as well as doing a split. So I'll, I could replace it with another piece of one and eighth uh, inch thick steel at some point in the future if I decide that two inch wide is really what I want to go with. But right now, we're going to go with this, and I'm going to use these two U-bolts to hold the shaft to the shield. And then I've decided just for something different, I'm going to use this purple uh, polyurethane, uh, polypropylene uh, cord, which is... What are you? All purpose, 530 seconds. So that's going to be the wrapping in the middle to thicken this up a little and make it a little bit more comfortable to hold so you're not gripping pure cold metal. Um, just because it was the same cost as the stuff I normally use and I decided purple is my favorite color so we're going to go with that. So first thing up is to remove that dish and, and replace my camera battery which I thought was charged, it was this morning, but I did shoot like four or five videos with it this morning, or six videos with it this morning, so maybe I shouldn't be shocked it's a little bit drained. Alrighty, um, so take that apart, get that taken care of, and then go upstairs and get a new battery. So this was only held in place by two fasteners, those right there, um, which I've saved, and these, the rest of the equipment was hooked here, so the weight of the dish was on the hooks and then those two held it in place. Now I've laid out marks here and here. Um, now I need to make uh, marks in the steel and then I need to drill out the, the drill the two holes through. I'll do quarter inch holes. That'll be big enough. Um, the problem is I'm not 100% sure how the heck I'm going to hold this thing. It's a large awkward object and it's curved. So Drilling a hole in a large, awkward object that's curved is going to present a challenge. I'm going to have to figure something out. I don't know what that something is yet, but maybe I'll get my saw horses out and use those. 
So that way I can clamp it from two ends at the same time and have the curve go in the middle between them. That might be the best way of doing this. That's kind of pain in the butt. But I also have laid out the marks for the steel. Uh, so we're going to end up with this section inside the shaft. I'm not going to split the shaft. I'm going to cut this and then I'll uh, remove enough metal so it just fits inside the shaft. And there will be two holes. Uh, I will drill holes in the shaft first and then figure out where the holes need to be in this uh, to, to accommodate them. Um, and the holes in this will be... Uh, shoot, well I need a shaft. Do I, well I need to have to split it anyway. I don't know, we'll figure it out. Um, I want to have as little play as possible and I'll be using quarter 20 bolts so maybe I can pull this off we'll find out uh, then I'm going to have this be this one inch section which will be sloped and not sharpened and then this will be the seven inch section which will be, these, will be the spear point itself and this is going to end up again being very a very light looking almost javelin like blade but I'm finished which is kind of what I'm going for here uh, so I'm going to take care of the dish first, I'll take care of that first, and then I'll take care of the cutout on these, um, and then the drilling of the shaft, and then the drilling of these, and then the final assembly. So, on to the dish. So using the saw horses was the way to go, able to clamp it in place, uh, two clamps on this end, one larger clamp on that end, and so everything was all set, and this is relatively thin, so I was able to get the, the uh, holes through pretty easy, and they're going to fit just fine. So now this is essentially completed. I don't have to do anything else to this. Um, when I'm finished, I will be mounting the shaft on here uh, after I have wrapped the shaft, and so then I'll be fitting the U-bolts and putting the brackets that came with the U-bolts on the back side and then probably cutting off the U-bolts so that they are the right size. And one of the nice things about this project is because I can disassemble it, I can just end up with a double spear. So I can still have a double weapon when I'm finished if I don't want to have it mounted to the shield. Uh, to the, to the, because it's, I would like at some point in the future to reinforce this. I don't know what I want to reinforce it with because it has a lip so I could be able to set something into that lip but I don't know what the best thing to set into it would be. Ideally it would be wood but I don't really know anything about bending wood to get it to fit a curve. This is a parabolic shape. Going after a parabolic shape for my first time bending something would probably be a bad choice. Uh, be a very sharp learning curve. I could, I, I guess I could go with some kind of fiberglass which would be far easier to conform to a parabolic shape but I haven't worked with any kind of fiberglass glass resins either. So I don't know. At the moment it's just going to be what it is um, and if at some point in the future I decide to get fancier I can always get fancier. But right now this is the project at hand. So this dish is now modified, put my clamps away, put my sawhorses away, and then I need to start cutting the blades, the spearheads, so I ha know what those look like, then see how I can get them to fit into the shaft. Um, and once I have that complete, then it will be drilling the shafts and then drilling the spearheads. So that's a, there's a process in this, one step at a time. Alright, so the two blades are done. They are not perfect, but they have edges and they have points. So I'm going to go with that. So now I need to uh, set up my V-block in my drill press and lay out some lines on marks on my uh, tubing and drill the two holes that are going to be needed for both ends. I'm going to figure out how, how far they have to be from the ends and things like that. Probably one inch and three inches, something like that. Um, and going to have to try I'm going to try to get them in line with each other. That's going to be the pain to achieve because it is a 5 foot length of tubing and I'm you know I'm doing it by eye essentially. So I'm going to have to 
see how well I can get that lined up. Because I'd like to have these blades roughly in the same plane when I'm finished. That would be nice. And I think this has kind of inspired me to build a bigger version of a double spear. Uh, kind of something with a six foot shaft, maybe. And uh, uh, do I have a, I have a five foot piece of one inch diameter tube kicking around. So if I did that five foot piece and I used bigger pieces, I went to a two inch wide blade and longer so that the blade itself was a foot long. That would give me, probably do an 18 inch blade over to overall. So it'd be six inches inside the handle and then six, 12 inches hanging out. I think I could get, uh, so I get an overall length of uh, seven feet. That'd be a good length for a double spear. Yeah, that wouldn't be bad. I would probably wouldn't wrap that one all because it would be uh, designed as a, as, a, as a highly dynamic form of, of, uh, of weapon because you'd be, doing, be able to use both ends uh, at the same time. But I'm going to have to practice my grinding a lot more. Again, if I had a proper knife grinder's belt sander, I would be far better off, but I don't. And I cannot afford to drop the thousand dollars or more it would cost to have one. So at the moment we're just going to do with what we've got which is an angle grinder and doing the best I can. So I'm going to get back to this probably tomorrow. I've I'm kind of been up down here for three hours and I've kind of hit my wall. It's time to relax. I am on vacation after all. So go upstairs and clean up. I've got, I've got grit from my angle grinder all over my head and my arms and such. So Go home, go upstairs and change my shirt and try to relax. This one is definitely going to have to go into the laundry. And the ground is is gray. Uh, that's not my concrete. That's the that's the dust from my cutting. So, yeah, done a lot of cutting so far today. And I'm going to be doing a lot more to yet to finish this project. So I still have to do the drilling. And I'm hoping I can just get this thing. In, 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 in theory, I could need four four holes in the handle and four holes in the blades and I'm done. But we'll see if that's is where it ends. <laughs> we'll see if I end up having to put some split, splits in there to get this thing to clamp onto the blade a little bit. Anyway, I don't know. We're going to find that out. All right. So, we'll be back at this uh tomorrow. Here we here we have the setup for uh drilling my the two holes. I've got them both marked here. Um both with marker and then with uh, my nail set um, so that there are actually indentations in the steel. Got it clamped and placed and I have it supported on the outside so it's about as good as I can get it. Um, so I'm going to drill two holes, one through either side and then I'm going to uh, have to turn it over and try to line it up vertically to get the other side because again this will not pass all the way through um, my, uh, my piece of tubing here because of its shape because it's a step down. If this were, if the entire unit were this diameter, of course I could go all the way through, but it, it is it is not. This is designed for handling a number of different size bits. This is just the smallest one I have, which is a 5 sixteenths, I believe. Um, I don't have a quarter inch one. Uh, if I, I think I may see if I can s scrounge up a quarter inch broaching bit. That might make my life a little bit easier if I had one exactly the, the diameter of the bolts that I most often use. I most often use quarter 20s. Um, they're very easy to acquire. I have dozens of them, maybe a couple hundred of them kicking around here, um, but not always of the right length. But uh, So that's going to be my, my task at the moment. Drill these two holes, get them set, and then turn this around and do the same thing on the other end and again trying to get it lined up and that's going to be the tricky bit. The tricky bit's going to get this thing lined up on the other end the same way I got it lined up on this end. Yeah, it's not going to be easy. I'm going to, I'm, I'm going to, I'm going to go for it and see how close I get. But if it's not perfect, it's not perfect. Uh, I'm not going to lose any sleep over it. So, time for making holes with my broaching bit. Uh, up the front, my apologies, I kind of got into the problem solving mode and I went further than I normally do between showing steps, but I've got these holes drilled and <laughs> discovered something. On one of these ends, I drilled a hole at one inch and I drilled the other hole at three quarters of an inch. That doesn't work. And then I drilled, on the other end, I drilled the holes correctly, but 
than getting the holes through the blade, the spear point rather, didn't line up except for one. So on since one end I could only pass one through because I did not drill the holes in line, um, we have one bolt here and we have one bolt here and I have taken up the space because the the, the spearhead was actually slightly loose in here. So I've taken up the gap with some duct tape. So the duct tape is centering the blade and this is definitely holding it in place. I, in fact, when I put these bolts in there, I actually had to uh, screw them in. I, the, they were just barely lined up and I just used the, the threads of the bolt to pull the bolt through the tubing. So it's, it's not going anywhere, take my word for it. And then I just kind of polished off the end of the, the bolt so it kind of was kind of flush. So the shaft is now done. So now I need to fit it on the shields portion, figure out where I want my banding, my, my wrap rather, oh my wrap, and then do the wrap and then reassemble it. So um, I'm not gonna bolt the, the this to it, I'll just put the U-bolts on there and kind of figure out where I want it, measure it so it's at the right length, and mark where I want the, the wrap to begin and end, and then take those uh, take that apart and put it right back into this device, which is here, so that, although I'm probably gonna have to turn it slightly, um, so that I can I can wrap it uh, more efficiently. Now I'd like to point out that this, at the moment, this is an incredibly dangerous thing. <laughs> Move. Moving this around my shop and me having to move around it when it is in the vise is really damn dangerous. Um, this is <laughs> this is not safe. Um, <laughs> I haven't really figured out how I'm going to store it because it's got points at either end, so I can't put it tip down in something really, and it's going to end up being really wide because it's going to have the shield in the middle. So yeah, I'm going to have to figure out some way of hanging this from my ceiling, I think, in the other section of my, my of my basement. I already got a couple of weapons up there that were also large and dangerous, and they're tucked up in there amongst the rafters um, so that they are not going to kill anybody who happens to be, uh, be, be wandering by. And I actually had to use my wrench here to kind of, I had this in the vise, and I had to kind of tweak this slightly uh, to get it exactly where I wanted to, and that gave me the control I needed because you can't really grab one of these pieces of tubing with your bare hands and turn it. You really need something that's got a little bit of tooth and uh, some uh, the, the length of that uh, monkey wrench gives me uh, a chance to, uh, to torque it on there to where the position where it was, where I wanted. And again, like I said, I had to screw that through. So that is definitely staying where it is. Did not do the best layout job with this, apparently. And I'm not happy about that. But the end result is, is that the two spear points are in place and they are securely can, held. And that is, at the end of the day, the important thing. Not that everything looks pretty. I am going for a post-apocalyptic vibe anyway, so the fact that it looks a little rough around the edges is okay. I'm not going to beat myself up about this. And one of the reasons I'm not going to do that is I've got serotonin in my brain. Let's all hear it for Wellbutrin. Um, so... Now I'm gonna fit the shield, mark where I want my wrapping, and start the wrap. And here we have the completed project. I am not going to be manipulating this one-handed to show you what it looks like from the other side. You're just going to have to look at the stills at the end of this video or stop by my DVNR page. Um, this thing is very large, and it's bulky, and it's got really dangerous points at the end. So, yeah, um, so you notice right off the bat, there is no wrap. I did wrap it, and I wrapped it from from here to here. Um, in the, the dynamic way you have to use this, it's very much a process of moving your hands rapidly from place to place and turning this rapidly. And the wrap could not put up that kind of dynamic motion. It just started getting sloppy all over the place. Maybe there's a better way of wrapping it, but I don't know that method. And I don't know if I'm willing to dedicate myself to learning it just for this particular project, because that's a really big piece of wrapping. I mean, even the way I'm wrapping it, which is with a simple spiral, that took up like 50 feet of cord. 
So a longer method that was that you know involves some kind of multi crossing or you know binding itself in place is going to take you know easy 75 to 80 to 100 feet of cord. And I don't know if I want to dedicate that much cordage to this particular project. Um, and I'm not going to cut off the ends of these because I want to keep the option of removing them and being able to use the double spear on its own because on its own it's light and dynamic. Um, this is a test project and again it's I'm kind of going for a gladiatorial vibe here you like a weapon you hand someone and say here you know fighting to the death kind of thing because um, I can't imagine that and that there would not be death games in a post-apocalyptic world uh, but you know but we have very pointy ends, um, but it's impossible to keep these things perfect. I mean, I just nicked this thing, and it's already not, it's already not uh, as pointy as I want it to be. This one is still looking pretty good. Um, the edges are, they actually have an edge on both ends, so that's good. Um, but it was not, it's not made really as a slashing weapon primarily, it's meant as a thrusting weapon. But it has inspired me and I may make a, a larger version of this with one inch tubing and using uh, two inch wide blades. Though, maybe you could stick with this diameter and go with the two inch wide blade just because I kind of like the, the, the ratio between, that might be interesting between the ratio between a uh, three-quarter inch piece of tubing and a one and a two inch wide blade yeah because this five foot stuff comes pre-cut it's very convenient you just pick it up it's not that expensive um, again it's a good entry point uh, base to build things off of um, and I will definitely be doing a different method I will be splitting it and having the blade be a little different and have a single point I've realized that I just don't need two points on these things the amount of pressure I am applying with the th with the bolts does not require uh, does not require uh, a two bolts. It just really doesn't. I'm making more work for myself than necessary, and that's that's something I need to get rid of. Um, if whatever I can make more streamlined, the better. All right, so I'm taking this outside to get some stills, uh, both for this video and for my DVR page. Please uh, do uh, if you get a chance, stop by and check that out. And I'm glad that you've been here for this build, and I hope that you will be here again for the next one.